Hey, my name is James Nicholson and welcome to my YouTube channel. Landlords are quitting at the fastest rate ever. In fact, over the last couple of years, 30% of landlords have quit and tons more are looking to quit. So potentially we could have as bad as half of landlords quitting the market. Now, as and when we do videos like this, I see the comments. There are often tenants in there that have had bad experiences with landlords that really are frustrated and say, good, but it's not quite that good because if you have less landlords, that means there's less competition. And what it also is gonna do is drive rents up at record speed. In fact, this year, the annual average rent increase is currently sitting at 8.5%, higher than inflation. If you get more landlords out the market, it's going to continue to rise at that kind of rate. And that's not good for the landlords. It's also not good for the tenants. So let's have a look at what is causing so many landlords to leave the market. Maybe you're a landlord right now. This will resonate with you. And maybe we've got some solutions as well. So before we jump into this, as always, if you haven't done already, do subscribe to the channel over there and hit the bell notification. We've got new content every single day on interest rates, house prices, property investing, and much, much more. And while you're here, smash like, tick or like, do something to that like button. That really, really helps with the YouTube algorithm and gets more views on the channel. I'm honest, that's what it does. <laughs> so let's see what landlords are up against at the moment. So first, is something that's improving but it's still tough and I want to explain this I know if you're a landlord you get this but maybe you're a tenant watching this um, the interest rate rises were used by the Bank of England in order to cut inflation so inflation is down at two percent now we had 14 consecutive interest rate rises now landlords would often pay on a buy-to-let property on interest-only mortgages. So maybe two years ago, they had a rate at 1%, for example. I've got one mortgage still at around 1%. Now, that 1% mortgage, when the Bank of England increases their rates, if the rate went up to 3%, that's tripled their mortgage. But some landlords had interest rates that went up to 6%. That meant that their mortgage payments went up six times. Now, that is unlikely in that scenario that they can then make a profit on the rental income without increasing that significantly. And even then, they might not make a profit. And that meant a lot of landlords that didn't have much equity in the property that got really stuck had to leave and had to sell their property. So interest rates were bad, they are improving, and I do expect those to improve again over the next year or so. Next um, is selective licensing. So selective license. These are introduced by local councils to stop rogue landlords. But I've got selective licenses. I've got them in Hastings. I've got them in other areas as well. Don't have them in Dorking, but they don't do anything. They're absolutely pointless. All they are is just money to the council. So in Hastings, here's how it works. You go to Hastings Council's website, you pay them £600 for five years, they give you a selective licence. At no point for that money do they come and inspect your property, do they check you, or anything like that. You just tell them on the website by ticking a box that you are a fit and proper person. No one does any investigation into your background. And I was just given the license because I paid 500 pounds. Now that isn't protecting tenants by any means. I would understand if in order to be a landlord, by their terms, they said to you, hey, look, we're gonna give you a license, but we wanna come and look at your property once every five years to check it's in order and you've got to pay for that. I wouldn't have a problem with that. That would improve the properties and that would make the tenant's experience much, much better. The council could make money from that as well. 500 quid for an hour's work is not bad. And that would contribute 
towards the council and also improve the properties. I don't have a problem with that. Most properties that I get are in very bad condition and I do a full refurbishment on those properties. So there's nothing for me to worry about. And that would also mean my competitors would need to bring their properties up to standard as well. So selective licensing is something that some councils have. Other areas are bringing this in because they see the revenue people like Hastings get from that and they want some of that money too. That also puts landlords off. Next is two different sections. We've got section 24 and that's the tax on rental income. It used to be that you could uh, take off all your mortgage payments and that kind of stuff. Now, you, most of the rental income is now taxed. Um, it's quite high, the tax. It depends on your personal income tax. But the tax has massively increased. And for some landlords, having a property in your own name just doesn't work anymore. How you get around that is buying in a limited company. That's the way you've got to do it going forward. And that's the way that you're going to make money in property. But very hard to move a property that's in your personal name to a limited company without paying capital gains tax, stamp duty, mortgage fees and all this stuff again. It's just not worth it. And so a lot of landlords are quitting because of section 24. Another big chunk of landlords are quitting because they're concerned about section 21 being removed. Now, section 21 is a no fault eviction and they are used unethically by some landlords just to get rid of a tenant in order to easily then put the rate up, the mortgage up to the next tenant. And the, sh like the housing charities have been against these for a long time. But some landlords like the fact that the section 21 does allow them to get their property back quickly if they need it back for some reason. And so that is a concern for landlords and they're leaving because of it. It might be right, it might be wrong, but they're leaving because of it, right? It's kind of irrelevant whether it's right or wrong. Landlords are quitting because they have the fear that they won't be able to get their property back, maybe for years for a court case, uh, if a tenant doesn't pay or smashes the property up. Uh, and so for them, they just don't want the hassle and they're gonna quit. So that's a big problem for some landlords. Next one is something that happened this week. So Ed Miliband at the Labour conference said landlords will be forced to get properties up to an energy rating of C or above or not be able to rent their properties out. We need more details on this, but it looks like you're gonna to have to spend a minimum of £10,000 improving that property. If you don't, you won't be able to rent that property. The average EPC rating, Energy Performance Certificate rating in the UK at the moment is a D. That's all property. So every most properties are not at a C. The government's saying all rental stock must be at a C by 2030 or you will not be able to rent the property out. Now, if you own a house in Chelsea and it's worth 10 million quid, spending 10 grand isn't a big issue in the scheme of things. But if you own a house in Doncaster worth 50 grand, it's a huge difference. It's more than the rent that you get for the whole year. And that's another reason a lot of landlords have looked to sell right now. There's a lot of rental properties going on the market. Next is capital gains. So capital gains is when you increase the value of the property. Let's say you buy a property for 100 grand you, and it goes up with time, or you do something to increase the value to 200 grand, then you've made a 100 grand gain. There's a tax on that, and labor is likely to increase that tax significantly at the budget next month. That spooked a lot of people, not just landlords, people that have got second homes as well. And so there's a lot of property going on to the market at the moment in order to sell it prior to when this is likely to be implemented in March. Because if people are gonna get taxed either 28% or it's gonna go up to 40%, they're gonna sell when they can still get taxed 28%. And that's what they're doing. So that's one more reason. And the last one is the renter's rights bill. So the renter's rights bill, 
Um, I did a video on the channel. Go and check it out. It's got nearly 100,000 views. It's in the last two weeks. So just go to videos, have a look through. That bill does scare a lot of landlords. It means that you've got to look at potentially taking pets in the property. It means that you can only have a rolling contract rather than a yearly contract. So there's no end date. Um, that worries a few people. I don't have a problem with that. Um, you've also got to look at only putting the rent up once a year. That worries some people. The section 21 removal is in that. If the property has mould, you can get fined £7,000. Um, there's more rights for the tenants through ombudsmen and stuff like that. Um, and so it's just a lot more regulation. Um, I don't have a massive problem with that. But all of these things are combined are making landlords quit. Now, what am I doing? I'm staying in the market. What I see is opportunity. I am happy. I don't really want more regulation, but... If it increases the quality of the rental stock, I think that's fine. I believe that rents will go back, will go up, and that will cover all of this cost. Ultimately, the tenants will be, unfortunately, the ones that pay this, but it will mean that we'll have more efficient properties. There'll be less rogue landlords in the market and the professional ones that do it properly. That There are tons of those people like me, and maybe you guys that watch this channel already, those people will stick around in the market and probably make more profit in a few years from now once this all goes through. Um, it won't happen immediately, but I do think it'll be a more profitable thing to be a landlord, but it will be a higher barrier to entry to get in to be one. And that's why I'm sticking in the market. What do you think about all of this stuff? I'd like to hear your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Keep them polite. Do smash like. Do share this video with other landlords you know. And check out all the other content on my channel, including this video right here.